Welcome to this month's Rural InReach broadcast. Hearing loss currently affects 16% of the Australian population and as we age this is forecast to increase to 25% within 35 years. Hearing loss affects people's ability to communicate effectively and easily and research suggests that there's a clear association between hearing loss, reduced thinking capacity and our mental health. Today we're going to discuss this further. I'd like to welcome the panel. We have Sharon, who's the Head of Community and Education at the EAR Science Institute Australia. We have Danelia, who's conducting research at the EAR Science Institute Australia. And we also have Esmeralda, who's conducting research at the EAR Science Institute Australia as well. Before we get started, I just want to ask two quick questions to Sharon. Who is the EAR Science Institute Australia and what topics will we be covering today? Thank you. The Ear Science Institute Australia is a not-for-profit research institute that looks into the area of ear and hearing disorders. At the Ear Science Institute Australia there's four main pillars. The first one is clinical services and under that there's the Lions Hearing Clinics and also the Ear Science Institute Implant Centre. We then have education through the ESIA Advanced Centre, community services and as we're going to hear about today, research. So that's, that's what ear science is. Thank what we're going to be covering today specifically is age-related hearing loss and what that means. What is the, um, the link between hearing loss and mental health and how, how that connects everything together? What research specifically we're doing at Ear Science Institute Australia around this topic? And I'm going to be talking a little bit about what it's like to have a hearing loss and what that hearing loss means for me personally in the area of mental health and my ability to communicate and participate in all the things that I like to do. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Esmeralda, Sharon mentioned age-related hearing loss. Can you explain what this means? Yes, thanks, Nicole. So basically, age-related hearing loss is due to the hearing system becoming older. Now, people tend to see a hearing loss firstly in higher frequencies, and they might not even know that they have a hearing loss. Now, this is a case where someone might say to their doctor, I can hear my wife, but she's mumbling. Now, what causes age-related hearing loss. As I explained, age-related hearing loss is due to the hearing system becoming older and this changes the effect of how sound is taken into the brain and therefore processed. You might also be more likely to have age-related hearing loss if it runs in your family or if you have high blood pressure and smoke. Now what are the consequences of age-related hearing loss? Now, there seems to be a lot of effects that we know of. Now, when you have a hearing loss, you find it very difficult to understand speech and you might want to socially isolate yourself because of this. Now, also, you cannot hear any high frequency sounds. So, you might not be able to hear a fire alarm or a grandmother might not be able to hear her grandson cry. It appears to me that safety and the ability to respond are examples of what happens if we don't treat hearing loss. Danelia, can you explain some of the other impacts there are for people if hearing loss is not treated? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, so studies done last year in the US has, has actually shown that untreated hearing loss is linked to cognitive decline. Now cognitive function is basically our fancy word for brain thinking skills. So the areas that were particularly affected is executive function, so decision-making skills, but also memory. The studies also found that people with untreated hearing loss tend to have higher rates of brain aging. So your brain uh, tends to age faster when you have untreated hearing loss. These people also tend to experience higher rates of mental health issues such as anxiety, depression and stress. I'd like to know a little bit more about that relationship with hearing loss and mental health. Can you talk a bit more about mm -hmm. that, Danelia? Absolutely. So when you do have a hearing loss, you might not initially notice uh, that you are experiencing hearing loss. Uh, you might just notice that you are experiencing difficulty understanding people. And because of this, you might socially isolate yourself. This might happen before you even know it. You might avoid picking up the phone or going into social uh, situations and this might have an impact on depression, anxiety and stress. Okay, thank you. All right, let's go back to brain 
function or cognitive functioning. I'd like to expand upon what that means in relation to hearing loss. Esmeralda, can you help us understand a bit better? Sure. So I'll discuss two ways today. So basically, if you're not able to perceive sound, over time your brain loses the ability to use that sound. So basically this is a case of if you don't use it, you lose it. Now, secondly, when you have a hearing loss, you find it very difficult to understand speech because you're concentrating so much on just trying to hear the incoming sound. Now, this can be um, explained by just thinking about a noisy environment. Um, it's so difficult when you're trying to have a conversation with the p person in front of you um, with all that background noise going on at the back. Okay. D does anybody else on the panel like to add anything to that? Um. I think it's really important to understand that there really is that link between um, not understanding those sounds and processing that information anymore because it really, that's what impacts a person's life is, is missing them and what, what does that really mean to someone with a hearing loss because that's what makes it hard is, mm. is what are we missing and what is the impact of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also think that, especially like Esmeralda said at the start, a common complaint you might tell your doctor is that it just sounds like my wife is mumbling. I can still hear her, but she's mumbling. And that's actually quite characteristic of losing sound in, in certain frequencies, because you might be missing out on essential part of words mm. which help to fill in that information. Yep. So even when you are finding that you are you know, thinking that people are mumbling, uh, or that it becomes softer, it might be a good idea to go and see your audiologist. Definitely, mm. definitely. It sounds like an awareness of what's happening for you is a really important factor here. And today we're really privileged to have, in general, as part of the, the panel, Sharon today, but um, because of her professional knowledge, but specifically as a person with hearing loss. Uh, what's your lived experience been, Sharon, in relation to having a hearing loss? It's really broad, I think, my experience in this. I'm not someone you typically associate with having a hearing loss. So if I run through a few different scenarios about what, what it means to me and where it impacts. So you said before around noise. So I'm a mum, I've got a, a seven year old and we spend lots of time in, at swimming pools, at sporting events. Um, there's TV on at home, there's background noise, even a kettle um, boiling in the background. Any one of those environments for me with my hearing loss, um, with hearing aids in as well, it is incredibly challenging to understand the words that are being said. Mm. For me, it's specifically around those missing words because I think hearing loss and the anxiety and exhaustion that comes from having to concentrate all the time around what people are saying is, I can hear that you're talking, but I don't quite understand the words that are being said. Mm -hmm. And that's where lots of anxiety comes in. So what is the consequences of missing that information? So. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's serious. With my son and missing his words and has he done well in at swimming or a sporting event, it can be funny sometimes, but really it does get frustrating and exhausting to try and concentrate to hear what he's saying. I find there's, I don't like going to, um, to swimming events and those sorts of things because it is, it's noisy and it's exhausting. Um, lots of times in my, my personal life and social life and even some work functions, um, it is, Cafes and restaurants are really noisy, so I tend to not want to go to those things. So I withdraw. And if that's something, which it is something I really enjoy doing, but I can't do that anymore, that's where the isolation comes in. And then if you do go, you're absolutely exhausted at the end of it because I need to watch. So whenever I'm talking to someone, I need to look at their mouth and see their mouth. And that I'm doing that all day, every day. Mm. Lots more anxiety for me comes in um, with medical appointments and doctor's appointments and things like that. So for instance, I can't hear my son's asthma wheeze. So that can be stressful, that can um, increase anxiety levels. If you're at a doctor's appointment or a medical appointment, what happens if you miss some important words? Mm -hmm. um, those mm -hmm. sorts of things. It can also impact relationships, with, which I think in terms of mental health, if you're isolated and you can't do the things that you love to do, Imagine then if you add to that, that you're having trouble communicating at home with your loved ones, um, which is where that's your safe space. Um, and you find that those mishearing words when you're tired can also impact how you're feeling and how, how your mental health is because you're tired, you're a bit frustrated, your family's probably a bit frustrated. So 
that link between isolation, exhaustion, anxiety, personally, definitely does make a difference. Um, it's knowing those environments that are really challenging for you and what, what can you do about those does come into it as well. But generally it is, it's harder and it's exhausting to do those things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, what's jumping out at me is is not only that that awareness of the impact on yourself, but also the impact on other people in Definitely. your life. And I think that's a really big part of it because it's not just um, me that has a hearing loss, and I, I do, but it, the impact on my inability to communicate effectively, which is what hearing loss is, I miss words, um, that impacts home life, family, work, mm. social, everything I do, I find it hard on the phone, for instance that really changes how I communicate with some people in my life. So it's it's everyone in my world, both personal and professional, that can be impacted mm. and that impacts me and how I deal with that. Yeah. Yep. And that's multiple areas of support needed. Yeah, so for me, I think that the support, and that I think that's a key thing to this, is how does someone with a hearing loss or think they might have a hearing loss or a family member thinks someone else might have a hearing loss, What, where do they go and what do they do for support? And support does come into, I think you might have a hearing loss, maybe you should go and see someone. Those support options specifically it would be um, your GP, definitely your audiologist, because that's where you get um, the information about whether there is a hearing loss there and then what should we do about mm -hmm. that hearing loss. And they're the people that can give that really clear information about, about what to do and what the options are, because there is a variety of different options. Let's talk about some more support options, in particular treatment options. Danelia, can you mm -hmm. talk to that a bit more? Yes. So depending on your type and degree of hearing loss, you might be prescribed a hearing aid. If you've got moderate to severe hearing loss, you might even be able to get a cochlear implant. These devices have been very useful to overcome some of the barriers to hearing, and many people have benefited from the regular use of their hearing aids or from cochlear implant surgery. I, I would agree with that. I think as well as combined with those would become into assistive listening devices which mm -hmm. can be used with or without hearing aids and cochlear implants. I know there's some that I use for, for the TV for um, communicating in, in really loud background noise. So a, a, um, a Bluetooth system for instance that connects to my, to my phone, to my TV, to, I can have someone else use it. And those combinations I think which are really around um, the audiologist will, will assist with those decision, that decision making process, but they really do make such a difference to someone living with hearing mm. loss. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm really curious about the current research that's happening at the moment at the Ear Science Institute of Australia and um, we're, we're fortunate today to have Esmeralda and Danelia with us who are currently doing research in that area. Um, can you both expand a little bit more upon what it is that you're doing? Mm -hmm. So as we've explained earlier, the research has shown that untreated hearing loss uh, in leads to cognitive decline. And so we thought, what if we treat the hearing loss? What happens to the executive function? What happens to the memory? What happens to the mental health? So that's what we've done. Uh, we've got four groups of participants. We've got people with normal hearing. Then we've got people with hearing loss who are not receiving any treatments. Uh, we have a group of people who are receiving hearing aids for the first time and also who are getting cochlear implants for the first time. And that's very exciting for us. So we get these people in uh, and we do a mental health questionnaire, we do a reading test, and then the exciting part is we play some computer games on a touchscreen computer which actually measures cognitive function. Uh, we do these tests before the people would be getting their hearing aids or cochlear implants for all the participant groups, uh, and then we repeat the testing three months and six months later. Okay, is that a, a, a wide age range that you have around the participants? Did you wanna... Yeah, so um, our um, age range is between the ages of 45 and 85. Okay. Um, all our participants are speaking Australian English um, for 10 years or longer. And we're just at the final stages of results at the moment, so we're very excited. Um, we are finding a significant difference between people with normal hearing and people with a hearing loss. Um, and it also seems that treatment options like cochlear implants or hearing aids can provide help to um, improve cognitive function um, in the long run. So we're very excited to see what the end results 
show. Mm, that does sound really exciting and I, I'm, I'd like to know from your perspective Sharon as someone with a hearing loss, what, what do these kind of results mean? For me, I can only put it in what I've experienced. I, I'm not part of this, not part of the study, but the difference in my ability to function personally and professionally, with or without my hearing aids in, is so drastic. So without my hearing aids in, I I couldn't definitely couldn't do the job that I do. I would really struggle, even in quiet, to understand all the speech um, in all the conversations that I have with all the people around me. I would struggle in meetings. I would have to be have most of my conversations one on one in extreme quiet would be the only way that I could really function. And for me that impacts memory, anxiety levels, exhaustion levels, ability to, to do the things that I love to do. When I have the hearing aids in, um, I can obviously I can do my job, I can have conversations, I can it minimises the words that I'm missing. So it is much easier to remember what someone has said if I've heard the whole conversation and heard all the words that they've said. So those that um, the devices that they've talked about as part of this research means that people, if they wear them and utilise them, can understand the w more of the words that are being said than they could before. Mm. So they're not as impacted by their hearing loss. Mm. In light of the majority of our viewers today being from rural communities, I think it's really important for us to discuss what support options and treatment options are available to rural WA. Can you expand upon that, yeah. Shane? It, it is hard. WA is, is a very big state. We have lots of um, service provision within the Perth metropolitan a area. Um, there is quite a lot also in the regional areas. So they're your GPs and your, your audiology clinics. In the, the more remote areas, there are lots of visiting um, ear, nose and throat and audiology and GP services. One place to go that you can find the basic information and, and find out where to go for choices is our website, so the Ear Science Institute Australia, because we have those four pillars and four components of the institute, which were the, the education, the research, the clinical services and community, means that we have um, the ability and we do provide all of that up-to-date information so that it is, it is linked to research, it is clinically based, it is all of those things. So a place to go would be our website, it would be to talk to the, the local or visiting GP, um, visiting audiologists. Talking to, talking to family and friends about it is actually really important in those areas too. I think it's identifying that there is something that you're having trouble with or something that a family member is having trouble with because as we talked about before, this journey is about the whole family and, mm -hmm. and their support, whoever their support um, team is. It is about them knowing what is happening, what's going on. And it even does come down to what are the best communication strategies for someone with a hearing loss, whether they wear a hearing aid, a cochlear implant or don't, because communication strategies can at, can at least assist and make a bit of a difference to what's happening. Um, so it's finding out where those services close to you are because there is lots of visiting services in those areas but also knowing that you've got the correct information which is what our website can provide. So that, that actually brings us to, to the end of the panel discussion today and I'd like to invite Sharon to just, just give us one take home message um, for the viewers that are watching. I think for me, um, coming from both my roles at the Institute and as a person with a, with a hearing loss, it would be if you have any thought that maybe you're having trouble hearing and understanding speech or if you have a family member that you think is having those problems, see if you can get them to access services that they can, whether that's their GP or audiologist because from there, once if it is identified, there are the choices to do something about it. Thank you. I'd like to thank the panel today for being part of this discussion. So thank you, Sharon, Danelia and Esmeralda for your time today. If you'd like to know more information about hearing loss and the impact upon your mental health, I do encourage you to go to the Ear Science Institute website, which is available at the bottom of your screen, or you can contact the Rural InReach program and we will um, give you as much information as we can as well. I'd also like to thank you all for viewing today and I really hope to see you all at the next broadcast which will be on trauma and this episode will discuss what defines trauma, the impact and opportunities for resilience and support in our rural communities. Thank you, bye.